In order to explain the concept of buffered channels, I'm going to create an unbuffered channel first. The channel is created using the make keyword and is of type integer. Next, I'm going to send a value to the channel. After that, I'm going to read from the channel and print the output. The percent %d tells the go print statement that the value should be written as a number. Also, I'm adding an escape sequence for a new line at the end, just to format the output a bit neatly, to say it in advance. This will not work, because I always need an immediate receiver in another go routine in order to send to an unbuffered channel. The program will always wait until the message can be sent. Here, in line number 9, it would have to wait forever. So, I have produced a deadlock. Now, note that I'm changing the channel by adding a buffer of size 1 as a second argument to the make keyword. That's how easy it is to add a buffer to the channel. Also, I'm going to change the name of the channel variable, since this is now a buffered channel. Remember that the program will always block until the message can be sent to the channel. The difference now is that the message in fact can be sent to the channel. This is because the channel has a buffer and can accept the message without immediately forwarding it to the receiving end. As you can see, a buffered channel with size 0 behaves like an unbuffered channel. As a next step, I'm trying to send a second message to the channel. What we expect is that Go will detect the deadlock again because our channel can only buffer one message at a time. The sending of the second message will block because the first message has not yet been read at this point. In fact, we get the expected error. Go tells us that it is line 10 of our code that is causing the error. This is where we tried to send the second message. To fix this, I'm simply changing the channel size to 2. So, both messages can be buffered at the same time. If I add a second print statement, we can see the output of both messages. Message number 1 and message number 2. As a next step, I will add a variable with value 10 and increase the size of the buffer to 10. I'm going to use this variable to create a loop that will go through the values from 0 to 9. Each value will be sent to the channel in sequential order. Also, I will create a loop that will read from the channel 10 times in a row. The reading loop will only start after all messages were sent to the channel. This is because both loops are called one after the other from within the main function, without an extra go routine. Note that I'm not using the index variable in the second loop, but will only read from the channel. As you can see, the messages are printed in the right order. This is because the channel remembers the order of the messages. So a Go channel is always first in, first out. I decreased the buffer of the channel by one in order to demonstrate that we are creating a deadlock if not all messages can be buffered until there is a reading side. On the other hand, of course, increasing the channel size does not hurt. In this example, it is okay to choose the channel size to be the same as the number of messages that we are sending to the channel before the code reaches the reading or receiving side. Please consider liking the video if you have learned something.